All right, so in this example, we have two forces, and we have to find the resultant force between these two forces, as well as the direction of that resultant force. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take force one and break it up into X and Y components. So we have 300 newtons, and it's going to be 30 degrees above the horizontal. So when we say that this force is 300 newtons, it means that this arrow here has a length of 300 newtons. Now, if we close this off into being a triangle, like so, and we draw arrows pointing to the head of this 300 newton arrow, so that would be to the right and upwards, because obviously the arrow is pointing to the right and upwards direction. So you always want to have your component arrows, which are these dotted arrows, pointing towards the head. And this horizontal arrow can be the X component of this force. And the vertical arrow here is the vertical or the Y component of this force. So in order to find the X component and the Y component, we actually have to use trigonometry. So we're going to use SOHCAHTOA, which is just the acronym that says the sine of angle theta, which in this case is 30 degrees, is going to be equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, and then cosine of the angle equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and then tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So in this case, we have, we'll label this triangle this as the hypotenuse, this as the opposite, and then this would be the adjacent, just because obviously opposite of this corner is over here. The hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, and then the adjacent side that's not the hypotenuse is that side right there. So that being said, if we want to find the x value of this force, which I told you is the horizontal side, um, you would need to find this adjacent side. So in other words, you're going to have to use either the tangent or the cosine, and to narrow it down even further, well, we don't have the opposite side's value, but we do have the hypotenuse. So we're looking for the adjacent and we have the opposite. So therefore, we would want to use the cosine of the angle. So we'll have the cosine of 30 degrees equals the hypot or sorry, the adjacent. So we'll have A over hypotenuse is 300 newtons. Now multiply both sides by 300 and you'll have 300 cosine of 30 degrees equals the adjacent side. And remember, the adjacent side is going to be the uh, force one X component. So all you have to do is plug this into your calculator and make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians. And then you'll have 259.81 newtons. And that's going to equal your F one X. So now we need to find the Y component. So we'll have that F one Y equals. So F one Y is like I said, the opposite side here. So the opposite side, we have the adjacent side we were given. So we can use this formula right over here. So we'll have that sine of 30 degrees equals the opposite, which we don't have here. So that's me F one Y divided by the hypotenuse of 300 newtons multiply both sides by 300 and you'll have the f1y equals 300 newtons times sine of 30 degrees and if you plug that into your calculator you'll have the f1y equals 150 newtons so now we can replace these unknown numbers here with our values so we have 259.81 as our x, and we have 150 as our y. And if you want to verify if you did it correctly, just do the Pythagorean theorem. So you'll have 259.81 squared plus 150 squared equals 300 squared, and they should be equal. So now let's repeat this process for force two. So force two, we have a 260 Newton force. We have an x component to that force, and we have a y component to that force. Remember that the heads of the components always point towards the hypotenuse's arrow. So we'll have to the left and in the upwards direction as well. And now this time we don't actually have an angle. However, we do have the ratio of each side's proportion. So if we look at our force diagram here for this 260 Newton force, and we call this our angle of attack, 
then we can refer to this side over here as the opposite side, this side over here as the adjacent side, as it's clearly opposite of that angle and adjacent to that angle, and then this side over here would be the hypotenuse. And then we can just call this angle here theta. Now, if we try to replicate what we did in the last step where we, let's just say we want to find the adjacent side, well, we would have to use the equation of cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, right? But notice that in the problem here, we're actually given all three dimensions here. So we have the adjacent side as 12. So we'll have that cosine of theta equals 12 on the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse is 13. And therefore we have cosine theta just straight up equals the ratio of 12 over 13. So now remember in the first problem part here, or the first force, I should say, we had force one y equals the hypotenuse of 300 times the angle. So in this case, if we want to find, say, force 2x, force 2x, we'll have the hypotenuse, which is once again, in this case, it's 260 newtons, times the angle. So instead of having the actual angle here of cosine theta, we can just replace it with 12 over 13. So if we do that, we'll have 12 over 13 in the x. You'll have that f2x equals 240 newtons. And now if we wanted to find the opposite side of this triangle, or the y direction, we would have that sine of theta equals um, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, as you can see right over here. But in this case, once again, we don't have the angle, so we can't really use our um, sine theta here. So we're going to have to replace our opposite and hypotenuse, which again, up here in the diagram up here, we're given that the opposite is 5 and the hypotenuse is 13. So that means that sine theta equals 5 over 13. So when we try to find our component here, we'll have the F2y equals 260 newtons times it would be the sine of theta, but we don't have that, so we can replace it with 5 over 13. And when you do that, you'll have that F2y equals 100 newtons. So now let's do some replacements on our force triangle. So along the x-axis, you're going to have 240 newtons pointing to the left. And upwards, you're going to have 100 newtons once again, pointing up. I should also label these forces on this other triangle. And now we have the components of each of these forces. So now we need to add up these force components. So we're gonna have to add them up in both the X direction and the Y direction. So let's take the sum of all of the forces in the X direction. So we're gonna have the first force, X direction, and the second forces, F direction. And we have the values of those as 259.8 newtons and 240 newtons on the second one. Um, so it looks like the first force is pointing to the right, so it's actually a positive number because we're going to define our coordinate as being positive to the right and positive upwards. But notice that the 240 newton force down over here actually points to the left. So because it points to the left, we're actually going to change out this positive sign for a negative sign. And therefore, we're going to have that the sum of the forces in the x direction equal 19.8 newtons. Now, it's still a positive number, so therefore, we can say that it points to the right. Next, we'll take the sum of the forces in the y direction. So that is going to be F1y and F2y. And we have those values as 150 newtons and 100 newtons. Now remember, we defined the positive y as being upwards. So right over here, we have upward y. Um, and both forces here actually point upwards. So we're going to keep it as is. We have a, a positive 150 and a, and a positive 100. So we'll have that the sum of the forces in the y direction equal 250 newtons and it is indeed upward because it's positive. So now if we had to construct a triangle, we would have our x direction to the right being positive, and we would have our y direction upwards also being positive. 
our x direction being a magnitude of 19.8 newtons. And then we would have our y component being 250 newtons. And because our arrows point to the right and upwards, our hypotenuse, our resultant force, should therefore close the triangle with the head of the resultant force pointing to the top and rightward direction. So now we're going to apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In terms of our triangle here, we'll have that the resultant force equals fx squared plus fy squared. We can plug in our values now. And you'll have that the resultant force equals the square root, because you have to undo this square here, of 19.8 squared plus 250 squared. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that the resultant force equals 250.78 newtons. So now we can go ahead and replace that on our triangle here. So we have 250.78 newtons. Now the last thing we need is this angle here. So this angle theta. It's the direction of our resultant force. So once again, we can apply SOHCAHTOA. So remember, it just stated that tangent of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, or sorry, over the adjacent, opposite over adjacent. So now what we'd want to do is we'd want to isolate for the, um, the angle here, theta. So we can take the inverse tangent of both sides. So if you do tan minus one to the left side, you'll just be left with theta. And if you take tan minus one of the other side, you'll have the opposite. So remember the opposite would be right over here, 250 divided by the adjacent side, which would be the 19.8. So 250 over 19.8 should give you your angle, which I calculated to be 85.47 degrees. And that angle is actually going to be north of the x-axis because we're going to have our x-axis basically to the right here. So we'll have a resultant force of 250.78 and in a degree, or sorry, an angle of 85.47. So therefore, we can choose our correct answer as being D, which is 251 and 85.5 degrees.